You guys are a bit early. I'm just uh, in the middle of pampering myself, but I guess there's no better time than now than to go through the MDUT tutorial on DaVinci Resolve. So once you have the M Beauty pack installed from the M installer, you want to open up the effects tab. And if that's not open, go to the magic wand button up in the top left. Then make sure you have the toolbox selected, type in M Beauty. Then you'll see all the transitions, effects, overlays, placeholders, pretty much everything to do with this pack, apart from the five LUTs, but we'll get onto that later. Alternatively, if you know that you only want a title or a transition, you can go directly into that tab, go to Motion VFX, drop down menu, and you'll see M Beauty there. Then you have access to all the titles in the same way. But for this example, we're going to stick to typing M Beauty at the top just so we have everything there in a very accessible way. So I guess we'll start at the top and work our way down, starting with M Beauty Blur. So if we just drag this onto our clip, now this is something I think is great for video portraits. It's a really nice way to focus on the subject while giving it a vintage vibe with the grain and the blur. It's not too exaggerated right now, so I'm going to show you different ways how you can adjust this, how you can make it personalized, how you like it. So if we head over to the inspector tool on the right, we have the different options. So here we have the blur size. At default, this is set to 10. And you can see as I decrease that, the blur goes down. So for now, we'll keep that at 10. You have the blur quality, and then under that, you have the range type. Now, this is kind of the most important part of the whole blur overlay, because this dictates where the blur is occurring in your image. So if we go to this menu over here and hit Fusion Overlay, we can see this green line showing us the range of the blur. So the range starts from up here. This is where it's most blurred, coming in to where we have no blur at all. These two points essentially indicate the X and Y of the range start and end. So if I move this, you can see the range start moves around. So wherever I move this, there will be no blur at all. And then wherever I move this point is where the blur will be most intense. So if we just reset that for now, going to the range type, clicking on linear, you can see the blur now is going from one end to another. So if I was to drag this all the way this side and then drag this back, you can see the blur is following it because we have a blur from one end to another. This is not something I'd personally use. I would probably stick it on the radial and keep it there. Let's adjust these because I quite like that effect. And what you can do, moving this around, let's say the model was moving around quite a lot and the position is not always staying in the center. You can always keyframe having the blur start here. Then when we get later on, we can move it a little bit up there and it automatically will move. As you see that red box, that is the blur moving. So that range star is always being on her face. Then lastly, you have the grain and the saturation. Again, this is completely up to you for how you would like the design of it. The grain, you can turn on or off, how clean you want it, the amount of grain, how intense you want that grain. If we just turn it down a little bit, then the saturation, you can see obviously this is a black and white image. So if you'd want the color still being in it, you do have that option. Alternatively, you can have the saturation button checked and then just start to dial in a little bit, being very sensitive. Because if you go all the way, you can see it completely ruins your image and it goes way too far. But you can dial it into how much you want it. So maybe you don't want completely black and white, but just slightly washed out, going with something like that. And then you have your image. Now we have the skin retouching. This works extremely accurately, but you do have to be subtle with it. With this tool, less is actually more. Now DaVinci Resolve does have skin retouching natively built in, but only if you have the studio version. So if you only have the free version of Resolve, this is a great alternative. So to get started with this tool, you wanna to head over to the color picker, grab the pipette tool, and just choose an area on the skin tone where you'd like the skin retouching most. So if we go up here on our forehead, press okay, and that's it. You know, if we toggle on and off, you can see that glow it gives instantly bit more saturation, a bit more of that airbrush tool. And then you can, of course, dial in exactly how much you want that effect to come into play. So for example, if we modify the gain here, and remember what I said, less is more. Because you can see if we go too far, it starts to look a little bit ridiculous. The glow is a bit too much. So you just want to slightly push it to a point where it's, it's nice, but it's not fake. So I think about there, if we toggle on and off. Yep, it's a good amount. And then one other thing to mention that you'll pretty much see in all these different effects is these in and out points at the top. All this means is having the effect come in and out when the clip starts. So you can have a start with it off, so you can see it comes in, or you can have it switched off, 
So as soon as the clip starts, it's automatically in. So for this case, of course, you'd want it to automatically be in so you can't see that you're actually putting a skin retouching tool on the clip. Now we'll move into the next section of placeholders. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky. So now if you hover over these different placeholders, you can see the split screen effects it's providing. Now this is obviously made to have multiple clips here, but you can't just drag this onto one clip because otherwise you'll just have a split screen of that one clip. So to make this, this is where you actually have to have a fusion clip. Now I know it sounds complicated. When I first heard of this, I was like, fusion, not for me. I don't want to try and mess around with any of that, but I promise you it's super simple. So once you have the three clips you want to use, I have them here. What you want to do is stack them on top of each other with the bottom layer being the one you always want to be first. Now you have them laid on top of each other. You're going to highlight all the clips, right click, and at the top of this menu, hit new fusion clip. Now you have all of these clips inside that fusion clip. And as you can see, the bottom layer is actually the one that's on show. But if we go to the fusion tab, you can see we have three different media sources. That confirms we have that successful fusion clip. So if we go back now and we drag this placeholder onto this fusion clip, you can see we have all three clips perfectly split across. Now the clip in the middle is not showing the area of the video that we want. So to adjust that, you go to segment two, the one in the middle, go to media at the bottom, and then all we're gonna do is just slide it across. And then if we finish this off by adding the distant titles, and there we have a really simple use case of how you can promote a hair care routine. And this works in a similar way with all the different placeholders. After you've created that fusion clip, you then have access to all of these different placeholders. Now, one thing to note with these placeholders is once you drag them on, always have a look in this section here where it says built for fusion clip with two sources because that will change depending on the amount of sources that are needed. So if you don't know how many sources are needed for each placeholder, just have a look in this section here and it will always tell you how many sources are needed. Now we'll move on to the reels section. And again, what these effects do using a fusion clip, they put together your footage in a very stylistic way. So if I know these are gonna use a fusion clip, but I don't know how many sources are needed, what you can do is just simply drag it onto a clip, have a look, and it says built for four sources. So I know I'll need four sources to create this fusion clip. So what we'll do is delete this one here, drag them on top of each other like before. We'll make this the same length. Now highlight them, new fusion clip. Then we have that there. Simply drag on the reels, and there we have it. And for this one, you do have the option if you want to put a logo where you can hit browse, go in your finder and place your logo. So this is a super easy way for a beauty salon or a hairstylist just to create really interactive short form content with just four clips and it does it for you. And then in each section, you have the option just to change the font, the size, the scaling, all of the usual stuff that you're used to be able to customize. So continuing to work our way down, we have the M Beauty Slideshow. Dragging that on, you're gonna see it says drop zone. And what this means is we have to import the footage into the slideshow for it to work. Now for this, you don't actually import the images directly into the media pool on DaVinci Resolve. Instead, you go to the inspector, hit content controls and hit browse. Then you'll have all of the different images. So for this to work effectively, you first need all the photos you want to use in one folder. Then you need to format and rename them so all the photos are in a sequential order. Of course, that can be quite long to change every photo one by one. So let me show you this hack of how you can rename all of your photos all at once and have them ordered. So what you want to do is go into Finder where you have all the photos, highlight them all, right click and go to Rename. Once you open that, it will come up with this text box. From there, you want to go to Format. Then the name can be whatever you want, but the most important part is to make sure the starting number is at one that way you have incremental numbers and Resolve will automatically load the images in the right sequence. When you go to browse and go into that folder, all you need to do is click the first one, press open, and your slideshow will begin. And it will automatically evenly distribute every photo depending on how many photos you have and the length of time you have the clip here. So if I make this clip a lot longer, the photos will then stay on the screen for a lot longer. So once you get past that initial formatting on the photos, it's a super easy tool to use. Moving into the tool section, a lot of this is pretty simple and easy to work with. It's all about adjusting and fine tuning to how you would like it. So if we start off with the beauty chapters, so you can see it fades on, provides a step-by-step -step makeup routine, has a line going all the way down, then it bounces back up and then fades away. So for this, it looks quite complicated at first, with all these different things in the expector. But again, it's super simple to control. Let's say, for example, you want to remove the last two chapters. All you need to do for that is click on chapter 8.8 .8 and chapter 7.7. .7. 
And now we no longer have that. So now covering the color sample that we have below, this again, is super, super simple. What you wanna do is click onto your color sample, that place, we have a smudge coming on. It's like a liquid effect. We can choose whether we want lipstick, powder, rectangle, circle. Of course, we have a lipstick image here, so we're gonna use the lipstick effect. Then to change the color of that, all you need to do is hit the color sample, hit the pipette tool, and then choose whichever color you want. Alternatively, if you're doing this in-house and you know the exact hex number of the lipstick you're using, you can just enter that in here or just you know play around, try and find the exact color you want to use. So now looking at some of the indicators we have below, once you drag these on, you're gonna see all the different options you do have here in the inspector. So of course you can customize the text, the numbers, but you can also customize the lines. So for example, if I want the number here to be right next to where this moisturizer or cream, whatever this liquid is coming out, I'll place the content over here. Then using this text angle, I'll move this to wherever I want it, as well as the distance. So let's say I wanna put this more on the top left, tiny bit further, and then from here, maybe I'll make the text just a bit bigger. Just move that there. And now, now the last tools example I'll go through here is the M Beauty Step Timeline. And in a similar way to the chapters, this shows the different steps involved in a makeup routine or a skincare routine. But let's say again, we don't want so many steps. For this, it's even easier to get rid of some of the steps you don't want. All you need to do is go to the text control and literally delete the lines you don't want. So if we delete the last two, then we'll delete protect, and let's delete exfoliate. And just like that, we've gone from 10 to six without having to adjust anything other than deleting the different steps. And then if you want to add in a step, all you need to do is create a new line and fill that in. So now that we've adjusted the exact steps we want, to show what step we want to highlight, let's go instead of nourish, we'll go for exfoliate. So that is step five. And as you can see on this effect now, the step five is one that is coming up. And then you can choose what color you want the background for that tick. So let's make it a nice yellow. And there you have your step-by-step -step timeline. Now going into the typography section of the M Beauty Pack, a lot of this works in the exact same way that I've just displayed. So I won't make this video super long by going through each of them, but let's start with the M Beauty review. So let's say you wanna show off some testimonials or review on your website. Going into the inspector tool, if we start with the content controls, we can of course control the position. So let's say you want this more as a lower third. Let's put it about there. Then we want to change what she's saying. Let's say this M Beauty Pack from Motion VFX has changed my life. You know, because Sarah Smith is very passionate about this Motion VFX pack. But let's say we don't want to reveal her name, so we'll just change that to Anonymous. So the rating system is there where you can toggle on and off. And if you want to change the amount, you can either enter in the number here. So if you want a five star, like Motion VFX is, you can just put in the number five or you can choose the slider here and dial it in exactly how you want it. Then if you want to customize how many stars are available, you can of course add more in there and you can adjust how the stars look. So you know, if you want them to rotate in different ways, if you want more points on the star. So you have all of this control of how you'd like to dial in your rating system. So if you'd like a more interactive way of putting on subtitles instead of the standard way that DaVinci Resolve provides, there's this karaoke style of subtitles that you can put in. So as the words go through, they start to highlight just like you're singing at a karaoke. From there, you're gonna use this word progress bar and use that to keyframe when you want the words to start and end. So if we go to the beginning, we'll slide that to zero hit the keyframe, then we'll go to, I know, let's go to about here, and there's 11 words on the screen, so we'll put 11 there. And now the keyframe perfectly lines up to that exact point. And that's just the easiest way to get it most accurate to when your subject is speaking. And the last step to go through is something you've been constantly seeing throughout this video, and they are the M Beauty transitions. So like with all transitions, you'll put them in between the clips you want to use. So let's use this blur flicker, and then to further dial in the look, all you need to do is go into the inspector section and then adjust the settings here. We can of course change the direction. So right now, the second clip is on the left. If we want that on the other side, we'll just flip that button here and we have the second clip coming in on the right. Maybe you want it the other direction from the top and the right. So if we try another one, let's go beauty replace, putting that on. 
we can see this comes in in the box and the new clip comes in. For that, we can again dial in the amount of blur we have in the background, but also the corner radius. So if you like this really rounded edge look, you can go there, you can circle it even more, you can have it really sharp. You could also invert the animation. So instead of coming in from the top, you can have it coming in from the bottom and transition that way. So that covers the essentials of all the different sections in this edit page. So to finish off, we'll go over to the color page and have a look at some of the LUTs. You wanna go over to the top left, hit the second button in the LUT section, hit motion VFX and beauty, and now you have access to the five LUTs. To apply these, simply drop them on a node. Different LUTs obviously have advantages and disadvantages depending on the scene. Personally, I think Vogue looks best for this clip here. But the most important thing to note with these LUT is that they're made for a Rec 709 color space. That simply means that you need to apply these LUTs after the footage is ready converted to Rec 709. Because if we take a look at this S log clip, you can see it's still in that log format. If I was to convert this back into a Rec 709 color space and then apply the LUT before, you can see it just goes wrong. That is not what the light is meant to look like. This, this now looks like an old Western film or something, and that is not the Vogue look that is intended. However, if I delete that and put a lot after it, you can instantly see the difference that is made. Now that Vogue look is there and we don't have that weird old Western look. So always remember that the LUT needs to be applied after the footage is in a Rec 709 color space. So that is the M Beauty Pack. As you've learned, it's super easy to use as well as being completely customizable. So if you want to know more about this or any other packs, head over to the Motion VFX website where you can get a bunch more tools to help elevate your videos. But now this is over, I want to go sort this situation out. See ya.